from CBS 4 News, this is News and Views with Elliot Rodriguez. Good morning. We begin with the debate over ethics in Broward County. In recent months, we have seen more than a few Broward County elected officials walk away in handcuffs. A former commissioner has been sent to federal prison. A school board member has pleaded guilty to corruption charges. And another former commissioner is also facing charges. What's happening in Broward? And what are the elected leaders still in office doing to restore public confidence in Broward County government. Well, joining me to talk about this this morning and try to answer some of these questions is Broward County Commissioner Stacy Ritter, who recently sponsored and approved changes to the ethics code. And thank you very much, Commissioner, for being here. Thanks, Brian. Uh, in 2008, the voters of Broward County approved the code of ethics. And now we have a ethics issue on the ballot. Explain what the difference is here. In 2008, the voters of Broward County approved an ethics commission, okay. which would have two years almost two years to meet to discuss a code of ethics in Broward County. Um, earlier this month, the Broward County Board of County Commissioners approved that code of ethics, so that will not have to be on the ballot. The language was really clear in the charter. Either the county commission approves it as is, or if we turn it down, it goes to the voters. We approved it unanimously several weeks ago. So that is now, we have an ordinance related to a code of ethics in Broward County. Started implementation was a couple weeks ago. We are now working under a new code of ethics. Okay, what is the issue that's going to be on the ballot? Uh, in November, there'll be an, uh, an issue that will create the Office of Inspector General in Broward County Charter. And because it's a charter change, it has to go to the voters for, um, for approval. Now, you uh, uh, presented some changes to the ordinance, uh, which some say have watered down the powers of the Inspector General. And how, how do you respond to that? Well, I take exception to that, first of all. Um, the Ethics Commission proposed and we passed an ordinance I'm proposing a charter change, which is much stronger. It's much harder to change the charter in Broward County than it is to change an ordinance. With an ordinance, you can change it any Tuesday at any board meeting with five votes. A charter change requires a vote of the electorate of Broward County, and you need 50% plus one to pass it. So it's much harder to change a, ch a, ch a charter proposal, which I think strengthens it. Secondly, um, and because of that, I think that weakening it is, is, a, is an illusion that's been painted by the people who don't like what I've done because they think that I'm stepping on their toes. Well, let's talk about what you've done. Now, you, you proposed, and it was passed by the commission, that the inspector general cannot investigate anonymous complaints. Why not? The police can investigate an anonymous well, complaint, can't they? And that's the point. There are plenty of other law enforcement agencies who do investigate anonymous complaints. The police, the state attorney, the FBI investigates anonymous complaints. But the Broward County inspector general isn't going to be able to, to, uh, to initiate anonymous complaints. However, Why not? But why not? You know what, uh, unfortunately, with the explosion of the Internet and the ability to hide behind your name, behind your computer, there have been many anonymous things that have been said about elected officials which are completely untrue. Now, the state attorney will investigate those. Exactly. Well, why wouldn't the in uh, inspector general, if they're ethics questions, why wouldn't the inspector general well, ins investigate it and clear it up one way or the other? Well, I think because the language says the inspector general can initiate an investigation with good cause as defined by the inspector general, the inspector general could actually initiate an investigation based on anonymous complaint. But if you want to file a complaint against a Broward County commissioner or a municipal official in Broward County, you have to put your name on it. And why do you feel strongly about that? What about people who say, well, you know what, I have some information here, but I, I'm willing to pass it along to the authorities, but why do I have to have my name out there? Well, I guess I would question why someone was unwilling to put their name on a complaint where they were alleging misconduct on the part of a Broward County elected official. And you also proposed the change which was adopted that uh, then the elected official can legally go after the person who filed the complaint, is that right? Well, that's the language that was tracked in the, um, by the Ethics Commission. The, the Ethics Commission in Tallahassee all, uh, actually allows an elected official to recoup their legal expenses if the, in the event they find the complaint is malicious. Now, that is not easy to prove. Ask somebody why they filed a complaint. They're not going to tell you they did it because it's politically motivated or because they can't stand the elected official. They'll tell you some good cause. So it's very hard to prove maliciousness. But if an elected official has to spend thousands of dollars defending a complaint that turns out to be based solely on someone's um, dislike of that elected official, it's malicious, then we should get our legal fees back. But can you see how this presents a, a sort of a, a problem of perception that people are perceiving while well, they're trying to protect themselves by not allowing uh, anonymous complaints by giving them the, uh, the uh, putting the fear out there that if somebody makes an uh, you know uh, an allegation that they're going to be sued by a, a member of the commission or some other elected official. Well, you know the Palm Beach Office of Inspector General, the Miami Dade Office of Inspector General allows legal fees to be recouped for malicious um, malicious allegations, and it hasn't stopped people from filing complaints in either Miami Dade or Palm Beach County. 
the Ethics Commission in Tallahassee allows it. It, has, it hasn't stopped people filing complaints against elected officials in the Ethics Commission in Tallahassee. It does not stop. You can say anecdotally it would, but, but in practice it does not stop people from filing complaints. Would you say that the, the timing is also interesting because just a couple days ago we had the two developers in Broward County, Bruce and Sean Chait, who ple pled guilty to corruption charges, pled guilty to uh, giving money illegally to, to a member, a fellow member of your commission, mm -hmm. and, and now there's an ongoing investigation in which your name has been linked to that investigation. Yeah, well, I think that anybody who has anything to do with Tamarack is being linked to uh, investigations regarding the Chates, and I happen to represent Tamarack on the Broward County Could you clear that up at this point? I mean, what, what relationship have you had with Bruce and Sean Chait? Um, social. They, they uh, gave me, I think, two checks for my Senate campaign. When I was running for the state Senate back in 2005 and early 2006, they contributed to my Senate campaign. Have you talked to uh, any investigators or prosecutors looking into this? You know this? what, I'm not going to deny or confirm. I'm a lawyer, and lawyers know when to say appropriate things and when to not say anything. And um, you know, I take my oath of office as a lawyer very, very seriously, and I'm not going to comment on any pending investigations. But you see how this sort of puts a cloud over the commission, and then at the same time, that the commissioners are being linked to investigations. You're also putting out there a, an ethics c code and, and an inspector general that's going to look into ethics problems. Well, I think that that should make the people of Broward County feel more confident that those of us who are currently serving understand the public perception about what's going on in Broward County. And so the implementation of an Office of Inspector General, which we've never had in Broward County, but which our sister counties in Palm Beach and Miami-Dade have, should make the public feel that, you know what, we're taking this seriously. Now, if the voters vote this down, what happens to the Office of Inspector General? Just Broward goes along without that position? No, the Ethics Commission, uh, in an ordinance, aside from their ethics code that they proposed and the County Commission passed, also put an Office of Inspector General in. Um, but that Inspector General can only investigate the nine County Commissioners. The one I'm proposing in November um, includes the County Commissioners, includes all of our staff, any Broward County employee, our board members, our agency members, and elected city officials. Now you've been on the Commission for a number of years. What has changed since the, the voters approved the Ethics Commission? and they've begun their work. I mean, as far as your job as a commissioner, how has that impacted in your contact, let's say, for example, lobbyists, people who do business with the county? How, what's changed? Um, it hasn't really changed. There's some additional paperwork. If, you know, in, in the past, if you come to my county commission office, you have to sign in, you have to fill out a visitor's log. But if we met in a coffee shop or you called me on my cell phone, I wouldn't have to log in that phone call or that contact. Now I have to log in a phone call or a contact with a vendor or a lobbyist who does business in Broward County and disclose what the conversation's about. Um, no gifts, no meals or, or drink, you know. So what's, you know. Okay, I don't mind. I pay for my own lunch most of the time anyway. Um, you know, unless I'm with, we're on with friends and, sh you know, my girlfriend will pay one time and I'll pay the next. So it's, it's not really going to change. There's some more paperwork. We have to do quarterly financial disclosures instead of yearly financial disclosures. There's some prohibition about what county commissioners can do with respect to employment. I don't have any other employment but a county commissioner, so it doesn't affect me in that respect. What do you, is this the answer, you think, to restore the confidence that people have lost in, in elected officials in Broward? I hope so. I really do hope so. I, I sincerely believe that an Office of Inspector General is needed in Broward County and one that has the strength to do the job that will restore the public confidence and go after the bad guys. Okay, and again, this is on the ballot in November. Yes. And is there going to be any campaigning and, and by one way or the other for or against this that you know of? Well, I'm going to talk about it on, on the trail, and I hope that people will approve it, that Brad Rotors will approve it come November. Okay. Commissioner Stacey Ritter, thank you very much. Thank you. For joining us on our show. All right, still ahead.